Hello, I'm Vicki, along with my daughters, Jasmine, Cecilia, and Hannah. We're the West Ladies. Welcome to our garden here at Homestead Blessings. Every spring we're so amazed by the miracle of a tiny dormant seed coming to life. Gardening can be a lot of hard work, but with a little planning and some creativity, it can be an awesome adventure that the whole family will enjoy. So come along and we'll share gardening tips, techniques, and wisdom. Welcome to Homestead Blessings. Well, one thing that's great in the garden, over your plants and around your herbs, your flowers, everything, is a beautiful compost black dirt. This black dirt, I didn't go somewhere to purchase it, although you could do that if you want to, but you can usually make it right at home. And this will cause you and your plants to be healthier. It'll be just wonderful. I'm gonna show, be showing you that with some simple piles, of straw, manure, and leaves, and compost, simple things like that. You can turn in, you can turn all that into some very, very nice, rich additives for your garden, and many times you don't have to worry a thing about any fertilizer. So I'm gonna show you, this is what our end result is, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna put a little compost bin together. This is our simple setup. Uh, we just used some, comp some little uh, pallets, and we just wired them together. We used uh, just some old T-post, you know, and put in there. Just kind of, you know, did that kind of construction. Uh, you can use wire and just start putting your table scraps, your leaves and things like that in it and start your piles. And I'm gonna be telling you right now about the different things. This has kitchen scraps, okay? And I kind of started with kitchen scraps. Now, this has been uh, kind of aging for a little while. The thing that I do really love about composting is you got to remember that if people give you a big fancy formula, you don't really have to worry too much because eventually everything rots, okay? So you can just put something, get a little wire of some sort, get a, get a couple of pallets or something and rig it up and start throwing your kitchen scraps and your leaves. I've kept this over here separate because Yesterday, I was looking in there and there's just a team of worms. And that's wow. what you want to encourage, isn't that great? Yeah, I see some right you there. You see some? So this, this just has like vegetable peelings, um, scraps, kitchen scraps, eggshells. Right. It's a little bit of everything. You can put a lot of green things in there. You can put your all your vegetable scraps for sure. You want to stay away from any meat or oil and things like that. And but no cooked food. No cooked Only food. raw, please. Only raw. That, that would be better. So we have different piles. We have this one that's a little more. It's not quite. Oh, look at those worms. Oh, and if you all know about worms, worms excite me so much. There is a worm called a red wiggler, and they are wonderful. And they stay right on underneath about six inches under the soil. And what they do is they eat the bacteria from the food. When the food is rotting, it causes a bacteria. And these worms eat the bacteria from that. So it's just amazing. And what they do then, of course, is they make worm manure and that's the best fertilizer in the world well you can read a lot about that libraries and online but i really got into worms i even have a worm bed but for right now my worms are happy they're growing in there they're getting fed and what we're going to do now is we're going to look at all the piles and we're going to put layer these piles together in a simple manner and we're going to put them over there and i'm going to show you how we're going to create a nice fast and easy compost that you can do like I said, there's no, there's no uh, set formula. Over here, Cece has some manure. Hannah has some old dirt. Uh, dirt's real good. You want that, friends? It came out of the barn, didn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Sometimes so you, like I said, could clean somebody's. Did you clean my barn? <laughs> uh, I think Cece did, and then, actually. I usually do. And now we have a pile of leaves. And Jasmine back there has the sticks 
Now, I have found that everything in the garden, all the scraps, it's wonderful. There's always something to do with everything. And these sticks over here, a lot of times people burn, can they will eventually break down and rot too. But for right now, we're gonna use these sticks for aeration, the first thing you want to do when you put in down something in your compost is you want air to be able to get in there. So we're going to use these sticks because a lot of air can get in there. So Jasmine, can you bring the, sure. the uh, sticks? I'll bring some. And these are like um, these are like twigs of plants and um, bushes that we grew in our garden, like flower, you know, twigs and stuff. They're not like from a tree. Yeah, they're, they're stems, just old up. stems and. When it clean Stuff up from like last that. fall. Yeah. Right. But what we're doing is we're starting a floor. It's like a floor, you know, to our compost. All right. So just a, a layer of these, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And throw it on in there, girls. And that gives us a nice floor. It doesn't go to waste. Eventually, all these sticks will totally break down and like I said, everything will get working in that compost and we're going to have a beautiful crumbly black dirt eventually. Um, it, you know, you can speed up the process. I like to do my compost in the sun and a lot of times I'll just take an old piece of tin and cover it so that the nutrients don't uh, just wash away and that I've got it until I can put it on my garden and you'll see. Is this That's good, good girl? Sure. Do we what tell do you the think? Folks about Green? These? Broken sure. Down. Yeah, these are just weeds that we have actually pulled out of our garden. And instead of just throwing them out, you know, get rid of them, we've put them in a pile and let them, you know, kind of wilt down and stuff. That's just because of the sun. And we actually use them and put them back in our compost. I know it's kind of funny because when I first heard about it, I was like, Mom, I don't want to put weeds back in the garden, you know, but they break down and they really make the great mulch and compost really help a lot. Actually, it, uh, the green adds a lot of nitrogen, so that's a blessing. You want a lot of nitrogen in your compost. So I just put a thin layer of green. You don't need as much green as you do the, the brown. A lot of people talk about the green and the brown, and um, actually it, it's all gonna make a wonderful, a wonderful, wonderful compost. It's gonna be great. Just a little bit there, and I think that's enough of green. You don't even have to use that much. You know, it's it's just sort of after a while. Wouldn't uh, grass clippings? Grass clippings are excellent and they're the most wonderful mulch to use on your garden, even if you're not composting. Okay, because we like to compost right in our garden. Now let's go ahead and do manure since you're right there. <laughs> okay, so we've got this nice uh, dry manure. This is great organic matter. This is wonderful. This is wonderful, mild food. This will just get in there. It's gonna make this beautiful, black, rich dirt eventually. And now we can probably, that's fine, and probably let's do a little layer of leaves. We'll do leaves. If you chop your leaves up fine, or you can just go over them with a lawnmower or something, it usually is really nice, uh, smaller. But uh, we'll turn these so they don't mat together too much. Just a nice little layer of leaves. Okay, and then let's get, I think that's good. Now let's get some of that straw. We found this straw. We cleaned out a, a hardware uh, store, had some straw in the bottom where they store the straw. And they just gave a lot of straw to us. So we just said, oh, amen. We'll put that in our compost bin. So we're gonna put a layer of straw. And a lot of times, even if you just, you know, do a little bit of cover cropping, even on your raised beds, you can use that for your straw. You dry it out, let it dry in a pile, and then let that real, no, 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 that's, th that's good, that's good. Okay. Nice and thin. Yeah, okay, now, next layer, we can start again. You wanna do some black dirt? You can use a little dirt from your garden. It doesn't really have to be this dark. This stuff's almost done already. But that'll give us some, enzymes right yeah just sprinkle it <laughs> just in here, sprinkle right? it in there yeah okay and then you can go back girls and and do leaves again manure again straw again it's just it's just really wonderful it's that easy would you turn this um 
at all or just well not right let now it it's still real and i've even heard that the composting will naturally aerate as it breaks down anyway and uh, some people like to turn uh, i like to put my stuff out in just different piles and restack it and do things like that you can turn it if you like you might get a you might get some crumbly dirt sooner but it eventually all breaks down makes nice crumbled dirt i also like to go around buildings and uh, other places where leaves have fallen and i find the most wonderful dirt so i hunt for my dirt a lot too not just try to make it oh yeah we didn't put any of that yet all right now sprinkle that in there now this stuff right here is full of worms and it is full of broken down all kinds of stuff. It'll break down more, but it is full of life is what it's full of. It's great. It's got green in there and it's got, it's got everything. And it's got dirt, leaves, straw, worms. It's a little heavy. Okay, let's put that on there. Which these kitchen scraps already broke down. Should I Go get some from the kitchen that oh yeah to... would you you know that's another thing i know a lot of people they'll put their kitchen scraps in a blender and of course i need a blender about like that because we fill a five gallon bucket of our kitchen scraps up pretty quick because we do a lot of juicing well that carrot pulp the worms love that carrot pulp and those worms just start working and working and uh as long as they've got some stuff to eat they are just happy and they just make a lot of black rich dirt. I like to do, like I said, I like to do composting in the sun, but for when it rains, I just take some old tin and uh, you'll get a little rain in there, which is good. But if it starts really drying out, you wanna have your hose nearby and you wanna make sure that you've got some water in there. It's gonna need a little bit of water every now and then. I mean, it won't be real bad if it dries out, just add some water. If it's uh, too wet, add some more dry material. And you just gotta keep a, oh, there's some great, whoo, all right. Can we just put that right on there? I think we'll just sprinkle that on there. Now these are kinda big, you know, these leaves, they'll eventually break but down. Look at that. Perfect. That's wonderful. Those worms are gonna love this. Okay, we'll just sprinkle it in there. Yeah. All right, we're gonna wrap it up now. We're gonna go ahead and cover this with leaves or with straw. You can layer it as high as you want to. And in a few weeks, you ought to have some wonderful black crumbly compost. Now we're gonna show you a little secret so you can get your plants in the garden faster or earlier. Um, this is a fabric we have called row cover. It's a special um, fabric that's made to keep frost off the plants. So you want to get some row cover from a garden supply center. You might have to look for this. It's not um, as available, but it can be found. This is PVC pipe. And then Cece, tell us what you have. Well, we've got some rebarb here. And what we did is we just took this to our hardware store and we had them cut it into size pieces this size like 12 inches and um, what we do with these is we're gonna hammer them in the ground because you want your um, pipe to fit, fit over right over your three rebar. bar okay so let's start hammering the um, stakes in okay you just want to hammer them in about six inches in the ground and leave six inches up to put your um, hoop on and these are um, three or four feet, depending on what you're gonna cover. Like broccoli loves cold weather, but it doesn't like killer frost. So if you're gonna grow broccoli, you wanna cut these about four feet so that it'll have room to grow under there. Okay, so, so we've put these in. And how close together should you do each hoop? I think we measured about three feet apart. Okay, this is so easy and it's so nice because those killer frosts, it's such a bummer to wake up after putting your nice broccoli and cauliflower out and found that a killer frost has come overnight and killed all your plants. It's nice to have someone to work with doing this. Thank you, Cecilia. You're welcome. Okay, and this doesn't have to be perfect, but it's now ready to spread our cloth over, which is our row cover cloth. 
And of course, she, this comes in all different sizes. I think this came in a um, 15 feet wide and a million feet long or whatever. So measure your bed. You want to have plenty of room on the edges. We're just, some people bury it on one side. We like to leave one side open so that we can get in and harvest or check our plants. Because you can leave this on until all danger of frost is over. The sunlight gets through the rain. So you can just leave it on. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely nice to have a helper with this part. Okay. Now. Okay, and what we do is we either um, bury a side. I think this year we stapled one side. We folded it over and stapled it onto our raised bed. But like I said, you can just bury this or you can put um, sticks or something. You want to secure it, you know, so it doesn't blow up. This is a very light cloth and you don't want the wind blowing it up. And that's about it. And this is a wonderful way to extend the harvest. You can do this for fall gardening too. So you can plant late in the fall and when those fall frosts come, you'll have beautiful vegetables that are protected from the killer frost. The next thing we're gonna do is container gardening. Container gardening is very, very easy. It's a lot of fun. You can get, well, you could get complicated if you wanted to, but I like to keep it simple. I'm going to show you first a really nice container. We built a couple of years ago these little wooden boxes. They're very easy to make or you can find them a lot of times in flea markets or um, some kind of yard sale or something. Find some kind of little box. You could even put some grapevine on it. We drilled some holes in it so we're, our water is going to go through here. Now this won't last for a hundred years. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some recycled plastic and we're going to line it with the plastic. Yeah. Hannah's going to give me a little help today, which I need. <laughs> we're going to line it with the plastic. And we're going to fill this. We can go ahead and we'll just skip right over to here. We have one already filled. We'll fill the dirt. And what I like to do, here's my dirt. And I just, I get this potting soil at a hardware store or uh a big large chain store, anything like that. Find some uh, nice potting soil. I put it in a tub. I like to put a little bit of a type of material called perlite or vermiculite. And this makes your container very light. And what's so nice about, would you stir this in here for me, Hannah, a yes. little bit? What's so nice about our containers, remember this, containers make it very, very easy to garden in an apartment, maybe if you just live in, a, in the city and you're just in a, you know, you have a lot to do, you can take care of these little containers without a little time, without, with very little time. What we're going to do now, I'm going to get this one ready. This one's done and it's just really beautiful, but it only took minutes to make. Actually, after I have my plastic in, then I want to trim the plastic so it won't pop up here and show. And it'll be very nice and even, and this will look very beautiful. I usually use black because the black has a tendency not show up. I wouldn't want to use white. So I like the black because it kind of looks like the dirt. So I'm going to push this down. Maybe Hannah put a little more dirt. And what I'd like to do, I want to show you that you can put vegetables in this also. That makes a nice gift. It would grow for a while. You might want to, if you're growing a tomato, you might want to plant it out later in a larger container. So, Hannah's going to hand me a beautiful tomato. And I'm going to make a spaghetti garden with this little planter here. Now my tomato, once again, I can clip these little leaves off here. And I will lay this tomato down because this tomato can get lots of roots going there. And that'll look really pretty. I've got my, I'm gonna give this to my Italian food loving friend. <laughs> and I'm gonna put some nice basil. And I'll, sometimes I like to get my water and I'll just tip the roots down 
into my water, my container, and I know that they've gotten a lot of good water here. It's nice and... Then I'll want to put some basil in here. And I think, how about some parsley? We're going to put some parsley in there. Probably want a couple more basils like right here. You can have fun. What's nice about it, you can really have fun making it look nice too, which is very, very easy. And lots of parsley. Let's have a couple of more parsley. Put these basils maybe in the middle. I mean, you know, it just up to what you really want it to look like for your friend or for your family. And put a little more basil in here and I might get another tomato and make it look really pretty. Just depends on what you'd like to do. You can make um, herb baskets, you can make flower baskets, vegetable baskets. So One more that. nice big tomato. And this tomato we're going to open up, going to lay down in here. I think we've got room. We've got this beautiful spaghetti garden. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> And it's fun. You can squash them in there. You can fill it up. We can put thyme down here, which we ought to do. I don't have any thyme ready right now. So anyway, here's our nice little spaghetti garden. Now when that fills, as it grows, it'll fill out a lot more and it'll change. And you might want to trim this and trim that. But this will stay like this for a long time. Actually, you can plant seeds in these little containers. I love to use impatience. Because impatients are very, very, usually they come after spring, usually around June in many locations. Impatients are just all over the place and people are selling them. Or you can start them from seed if you like. But what's really nice is this little, this little wagon is not actually planted. If you're having a party or a get together and you want to make a really darling little container, take your plants just like this. I took a whole tray a whole plant tray and just Whoops. yeah that's okay and just show them how to put it back down in there these are just trays and we just put it back down into the wagon and we have an instant beautiful container another wonderful good idea quick idea we can take some of our little trays here and we can fill this beautiful Hannah's going to help me out this beautiful garden tray of course you can almost use any kind of tray Nice thing, you can move it around to different places that you'd like to fill in your garden or your patio or your backyard. Get it as full as you can and really the flowers just seem to like just spill over and it's just beautiful. Isn't that nice? And you can carry it anywhere. Want more? I love that. Should I fill it up more? Yeah, just go ahead and fill that up. I would like to encourage you that you can grow many of your cherry tomatoes and simple little vegetables like peppers, tomatoes, and things like that right in a container. This one's a little plastic container. Uh, actually, I recycled it, but you can use a lot of different kinds of containers. This one I have petunias in. You can even plant a boot. <laughs> and that almost always brings joy to anybody that sees it. Look at that. I love that. You can plant all kinds of things, not just impatience. You can plant marigolds and things like that. Look real cute. Here's a little bitty dinner pot. It had lost its handle, and I just thought that marigold looked so pretty in there. So you can use that. Here's a pepper plant. Peppers will actually get pretty big and bear just fine. Keep fertilizing, you know, every now and then, every two weeks or so. This is another great idea. Um, my, I found this little bucket and I thought pink and gray look cute together, so it just had to have, once again, impatience. I put thyme in this bucket last year and it just overflowed this year. I love this idea. <laughs> this is an old, old wash stand. Um, the old tub has a few holes in it, which is perfect for planting. So I put in my sage and my thyme and later I might put in a few parsley plants in here so that I can just walk out my patio and have some herbs for my dinner. And it's very fun, it's, it doesn't take a lot of time, and it's very, very oh, beautiful. It is beautiful, look at this, zinnias. Grew in this old spaghetti pot. Well, at least that's what we used to use it for, big old spaghetti, before it got some holes in it. And I just really into recycling. This little pot down here looks wonderful. 
I thought I needed some blooms in there and that's what's nice about impatience. You can just usually get them about this time of year and they're already blooming. Just stick them in there and you've got a beautiful, beautiful pot. This was fun. This is a, an old oh, wash basin and it has seen its day. Well, I had these hens and chicks and I thought, well, I've got to have a place for them. This is perfect for hens and chicks. Hens and chicks have a shallow root and after a while they'll spread roots out and grow more plants. So um, I thought this was kind of neat. So I just put the hens and chicks and for now I put shells in there. That'll keep any critters out. But container gardening, all kinds of containers. Use your imagination and have fun with it. Hey, the great news about gardening is you don't need a lot of heavy equipment to grow a productive garden. We wanted to show you all some of the simple tools that we use. Right here we've got a um, digging fork and this thing is just great to break up the ground if you need to and um, dig around, dig potatoes with. It's just an all around good tool and um, like she said, you don't need big equipment. You don't need a tiller necessarily to do a small gar garden. This is a great tool to use to break up the ground for your beginning. We've got a hoe, the good old fashioned hoe that works wonderfully when you're um, hoeing the rows. If you want to make a trench to put your seeds in, you can just find these at your local hardware store or like she said, we found them at an old yard sale once. And you can use this just to make like your, you know, just to make a trench and then you put your seeds in and you can also use it to cover and it's also good to pull up weeds. So it can also be used for a marker to measure how far apart to do our rows. So tell yeah. us how you do that. All right, well, I just took a tape.